Hey everyone, this is Jane with Barlow Herbal and happy Sunday, July 30th of 2023, our last Sunday in July. Um, lots of crazy things happening as usual and in the news and all of that, but I am here today to give you my normal Sunday pop of inspiration and hope and love. And I actually had this amazing week this week um, amidst all of the keeping up on what's happening in the world, but I had the opportunity to listen in person to one of my favorite people um, speak and I got I got invited to be in Ohio I just got home last night it was a very impromptu trip if any of you live in Columbus Ohio which I'm sure many of you do um, what an amazing city I just got home last night I was only there from Thursday to Saturday night and I got to be um, in a room where Stephen Ozonich, who was the author of The Great Pain Deception, was being interviewed. And I have known Stephen for nine years. I've interviewed him six times on my YouTube channel. They live there. They've, I've been friends with him since about 2015, maybe 2014. And he is just one of my dearest friends, but I had never met him in person. So I had this opportunity to go to this small event where he was being interviewed, it was all being recorded, and um, it was just this whirlwind trip. It was full of a lot of amazing new people that I met, some people that I knew before um, were there as well. Uh, people kind of from came from all over. Um, there was about 45 people there was all, it was amazing. and. Um, my nephew Ben, Benjamin Hardy, who I've also done interviews with him, uh, we, we flew out there together. He was here, um, he's still here in Salt Lake with his wife and his six kids. They come here every year for three weeks. They, they see my sister, who's his mom, and, and their dad, and they, they spend time here. So we had this opportunity. We both jumped on a plane, and we flew to Columbus, Ohio, and um, beautiful city. I mean, I've never been there. Um, it looks, has this beautiful small town feel, but I was like, wow, it's got almost a million people. And to those of you who live in Columbus, Ohio, or anywhere back in Ohio, I wish I'd have been out there with more time to maybe even set up something where I could, where I could meet you in person. But one of the things that happened while I was um, going on the plane with my nephew, Ben, which, you know, for him, he's personal development, he's super high level, he actually coaches high level entrepreneurs and business owners, he speaks at these big, big events, and, you know, he's just a very in tune young person for how old, he's 35, and, you know, I feel so lucky that I get to collaborate with him and just talk with him, and, you know, we kind of throw things back and forth with each other. But we both brought our journals, I got my journal here, and I'm on a new journal. <laughs> this one's got a little smaller pages, but still does the job. And um, uh, while we were th going there, he introduced me to a book that he'd just gotten. And this is a little book that was actually published in 1923. It's 100 years old. And it's called How to Get Anything You Want, and it's by a woman named Elsie Lincoln Benedict. And um, apparently this book is based on um, many of her lectures. And this was, um, I guess she ended up speaking to hundreds of thousands of people over, over her career. And because it's so old, it's, it's got these antiquated anecdotes. And, but this is like the law of attraction way before The Secret came out, way before any of that stuff. And it is a brilliant book. And, my nephew Ben was gifted this by a uh, friend of his who is someone I know as well. I'm not as good a friend, but this is um, from a person named Russell Brunson. And Ben is going to be, um, I believe they're very close to getting something settled to, to do a book together. But apparently, Russell told Ben, this is one of the, this is my secret weapon. This is a book that, um, you know, so Ben let me start reading this. And of course, you know, I got through it. I marked it up. I actually started writing notes. And then I was just like, I just want to write. I just want to write down everything. So Ben's like, go ahead and mark it up. 
And so I actually went online and bought another book to give, to give back to Ben. But I'll put um, a link to this on Amazon. I actually looked it up. It's on Amazon. There are literally two reviews. This is like this little hidden gem um, that is so fun to read. I love the way that this is written. You can tell that it was written 100 years ago. It's a brilliant book. So I'm just gonna kind of go over some of the notes that I started writing before I just started marking up the book because um, this is a really good place to start. And if I were to actually, I'm gonna go through more concepts in this book on other videos, but the very first chapter talked about um, how important it is to strategically control, um, maybe control is the wrong word, but it's probably the best word, um, our moods. Our, our positive attitude and I will tell you for those of you who know me and know the way that I operate in the world and and I have my moments where I can be negative but I think that this has solidified my positive attitude uh, in gold not just in cement but in gold because there are so many reasons um, to really give your subconscious this positive outlook so basically, um, here's where I started with my notes. No one outside yourself can, can ruin your life. No one but yourself can make your life successful or happy. Whatever comes to you habitually comes because of your habitual attitudes. Whatever comes to you habitually comes because of your habitual attitudes. I mean, think about people who um, you run across that it seems like they're always lucky seems like things always work out for them. seems like the opportunities always drop in their lap. But the beautiful thing about the way she writes about this in this first, especially this first chapter, um, it's all about changing your mood and really being conscious about the way you put your energy and your moods out and your feelings. It's not about your thoughts. It's about your feelings. Now, your thoughts are important, but your thoughts are, don't turn into things. It's actually the way that you feel. And I think this is what's so powerful about this little book. So you hold the key to every situation. First, you must recognize that this responsibility is your own and face it instead of seeking, as most people do, to fasten it upon someone or something else. So realize that this is yours. This is not something that you can blame on someone else, give it to someone else. And I actually wrote this. This is a, was a quote from her book. First, you must recognize that this responsibility is your own and face it instead of seeking, as most people do, to fasten it upon someone else or something else. Um, I mean, that is a, a, such a powerful statement. The moment we begin to, to in, uh, acquire within for the cause of our external conditions, we begin to progress. Now it's interesting as I was writing this, I was re this is the part I wrote as I was flying on my trip. And then of course, if you've watched any of the interviews I've done with Steven, you, you realize the message is um, of, of TMS, which is the mind body syndrome, how our body creates physical pain um, because it's a protective mechanism, the emotional, um, trauma or drama or the things that we focus our attention on um, or in my case and the reason I even got connected with Steven is because I was having chronic pain that would move around and I saw chiropractors and I saw acupuncturists and and those are all good modalities but I was just doing something to relieve the pain instead of going after the cause of the pain which was my perfectionism and my rage my rage at the little things my husband would do or you know, there's, there's a, this is a whole other great big topic and I would suggest going onto the YouTube channel. I've got everything in a playlist, all the interviews I've done with Steven. Look through them. If any of that little nugget resonates with you, this is a really, really powerful book. So I was writing this down on my trip there and then I marked up the book on the way back. But the moment we begin to acquire within um, for the cause of our external conditions is when we begin to progress. So we have to look inside. You know, I think what, if you look at everything that's happening in the world, it's easy to get focused and angry and have this feeling of fear and what's gonna happen. And we see all these um, 
things that are happening that we that we our awareness is now very focused on and it's our our addictive brain keeps re-cementing all the things that we see so even though we know there's things that are happening that are not good we keep bringing them into our awareness and we feel these feels right we feel afraid we feel angry we feel frustrated and i'm saying this because these are feelings i've had and i think that it's good to know what's happening but then it is good to take that knowledge make it it will help it let it help you go into a preparedness and an awareness state but then you need to take all of that information and you need to let it push out positivity and love in fact there are there are studies and Joe Dispenza actually quotes a, a beautiful study on um, uh, on how uh, you know asking a group of people to pray at the same time can literally change the crime rates that go down and the frequencies that happen and and the goodness that starts to happen and the way human beings start feeling better it doesn't take all of us to have these good feelings and i'm not talking again about thoughts now thoughts can turn into your feelings because what you're thinking about creates the way that you feel but you have to be so strategic about the the things that you feel and this has really cemented my desire to dial this in because i have been really caught up if i'm being honest in all of the things that are happening in the world right now and it gives me angst and anxiety and it, it you know and I, and I push forward and i'm still able to, be, able to be positive most of the time but i think again it's not about burying your head in the sand and just walking around la 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 everything's great it's not about that at all it's about being aware being prepared and then push out positivity this is what the world and humanity needs right now so the moods that predominate deep deep inside of our hearts are living vital forces and they create actualities in our lives which actually actually correspond to our own nature okay, i'm going to read that again the moods that predominate deep deep inside our our hearts are living vital forces and they create actualities in our lives which exactly correspond to their own nature so the moods are moods and what we're feeling they are a living vital force that lives within our heart so we can think all we want we can let our keep our brain going keep our brain going keep our brain going and we are human beings we have this ego we need to know what's going on and that's all good but where the magic is where the living vital force is is right here in our heart and think about when you watch a commercial that pulls your heartstrings you know you can watch something and i've done this hundreds of times watching a movie watching a commercial watching something that literally makes me emotional and makes me cry it gives me all those feels right all of us can relate to that because that is these feelings are living vital forces as we start start out on this journey know that our lives are not just a series of accidental happenings as we have supposed but they are outer circumstances built directly or indirectly, innocently, usually unknowingly, but nevertheless inevitably, inevitably, inevitably by groups of in, inner feelings. Okay, like that was like a huge thing that came out of this first chapter. As we start out on this journey, know that our lives are not just a series of accidental happenings, outer circumstances built directly or indirectly, innocently, usually unknowingly but nevertheless inevitably by groups of inner feelings oh my goodness if that doesn't just like ring this ginormous bell for you um maybe go back and read it again i'm at or listen to that again i'm gonna put that below this video because i think that is so powerful the feeling not the thought you have about any given thing or person is your predominant attitude that towards that person or thing so i feel like every note i have i wrote here i have to say twice the feeling not the thought you have about any given thing or person is your predominant attitude toward that person or thing okay, i'm going to go through this because i'm already at 50, almost 15 minutes 
and I have, I might not actually get through all this. Oh, I might. I know some of you can sit through this. So this is really powerful stuff. From, from the hour when we begin to reverse past thoughts and feelings of long-held resentments, fears, hates, jealousies, we discover the exact cause of our troubles and we can begin to reverse these attitudes. We immediately start to feel courage instead of fear, love instead of hate, forgiveness instead of resentment. So it's really just recognizing, recognizing this. You can bring good to yourself by entertaining good feelings in your, in your bones, just as easily and as surely as you can bring about the bad. So think about this. If someone says, I have this bad feeling, I feel it in my bones. And this is something that, that Elsie in this book, this was kind of a little analogy that she used in this chapter was, you know, you, you, know, you, you think I have this bad feeling and I can just feel it to the depths of me. Well, just as you have the feelings that are bad, you can have the same thing on a good level. You can bring good to yourself by entertaining good feelings in your bones just as easily and as surely as you can bring the bad. Very few people realize this. They think the only premonitions that come, that come to them are the bad ones. This is so not true and I am I will attest to this all day long. I will have a good premonition, I'll have a good feeling about something, and I will have things that will give me a hesitate, that will make me hesitate. I don't know if it's something I feel that's like totally bad to the bone and maybe I don't let myself get that far where I go experience it, but um, I have good feelings even though they might be slight, but the more you practice this, the more they flow to you and they come to you. It's easier to drift or to slide downhill and to settle into pessimism, and it becomes a habit. You have progressed a long way when you can simply realize or recognize that these deep feelings are the real forces which directly or, indir or indirectly create the conditions of your life. Then, you and you alone determine what these inner feelings will be. Like, think about this. Something happens, like think about uh, someone who got cancer or someone who's in a car accident, and you will hear people say all the time, this is the best thing that ever happened to me because it made me have this shift. Now we don't have to have these horrible things happen to have the shift. We can have something happen to us or happen for us because that's the perspective that we are striving for, but it's the way we choose to look at it. It's the way we choose to feel about it. You know, I, I had a business with one of my sisters 25 years ago. In fact, this is Ben, my nephew Ben's mom, my sister Susan, we had this beautiful business together. And I say beautiful because there were so many good things about it. We built this new building, we got this small business loan. We did so many things about it that were amazing, but it didn't, it, it, it could have really destroyed our relationship. And things were really, really hard, especially when it, it failed and we lost, we both lost everything. But what we've realized, and like I said, this was 25 years ago, we've realized that the way we feel about everything that happened, and we're so blessed and, and lucky and grateful for the insight to know that this is something that we felt gave us this huge gift because it helped us make, avoid the mistakes in businesses that we have had since then. So it, you, it, how you feel about something is so powerful and it, you can a lot of these things determine the health your health and your wellness i mean if you feel if you think you're going to get sick and i could tell you stories of people who believe so deeply to their bones that they are preconditioned or they have a genetic disposition to get a certain disease and it's something that they truly believe um their body will your your subconscious wants to 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 make your wishes come true. And that might sound crazy, but I, you know, this is, this is a, such a powerful concept. So I'm gonna read this again. You and, you and you alone determine what these inner feelings will be. These feelings build your life, but you build the feelings. You don't have to know how, just know that it does. And this is one thing, you know, it's, it's always like, well, tell me how to do that. And that's one, actually one beautiful thing about this book. It, honestly, it's on Amazon, it's $14. And I 
this is just something that's new to me. It's something I just found out. Um, and if you're into personal development, I, this is a gem. This is a little gem. <laughs> Two reviews on this 100-year-old book that it, you can still get. If you want to remake your life, remake your moods. Once you recognize its, its necessity, it is, simple, it is a simple thing to do. So simple, it seems unbelievable. Yet so powerful, it will make your life better from the very moment you try it. The old mood dies for lack of cultivation. If you're used to being a negative person and that is, and you stop, you stop cultivating that. It will die because you're not cultivating it anymore. You're not giving it any more attention. You're not helping it grow. And this takes a conscious effort. This, this gives you beautiful step-by-step -step things to do that um, is really amazing. I actually got through um, all but the very last section of this little book. There was like 180 pages in it. It was a, a perfect for a flight th that far that had a stopover there and a stopover back. So I was in the air a long time. Um, harmful attitudes die slowly, but you can build positive ones with incredible speed. So harmful attitudes die slowly. We get addicted to those, right? And they're so prevalent. But you can build positive ones with incredible speed. When we build um, downward, we are opposing all the constructive force. And when we ally ourselves with all our God-given powers, the moment we start building upward. That wasn't a perfect sentence, but when we go downward, we're, we are basically opposing all the constructive forces of nature. When we uh, al ally ourselves with our God-given powers, it's the moment we start building upward. That's what happens. Every time we lift our heads and hearts, we are met instantly by some shining power greater than ourselves. And um, the nice thing is, as she goes through, um, you know, different people are at different places in this journey of actualization and realization of the potential that we all have. And it's just not that hard. And the more you practice it, um, you know, there is really something to the law of attraction. And I remember when The Secret came out, um, I owned a copy on CD and I watched it multiple, many times. And it's still a very powerful uh, movie with a powerful message. There's no such thing as standing still. We are always moving. So are you, you're either getting weaker or you're getting stronger than yesterday. There's no such thing as standing still. We are energy. We are pure energy. Okay, we're at 20, almost 23 minutes and I'm almost done with the notes that I made. If you could change your future, change your mind. If you wanna change your future, change your mind. This is easier than you might think. Simply by watching, watching your reactions and then gently, deliberately, persistently giving back to the events of life the kind of reaction you want to build your future. So I must see this one again. If you could change your future, change your mind. This is easier than you might think. Simply by watching your reactions, and I underlined watching your reactions, and then gently, deliberately, persistently giving back to the events of life the kind of reaction you want to build your future. Don't be in a hurry, don't be afraid or impatient, okay? But you must be persistent. It, it is not persistence, but intense effort. That seemed like that, that didn't match, but that, that's, that, those were my notes. It's not the events, it's our reaction to them. Okay, so that's where my notes ended and I started scribbling up this book. So let's, let's take that last sentence and let's put it into the events of the last three and a half years. So it's not the events. Now those events are happening regardless of, of our mood, the way we respond to them. We can choose to, to go into this world as chaotic, chaotic as it might feel, and we can choose to push out so much love, so much positivity, so much abundance, and we can literally change other people around us too. And the nice thing is, is, is there are so many beautiful ways to get past the doubts and the, you know, I mean, I would highly suggest that you pick up this little blue book. Um, you know, I'm grateful that I have this in my possession 
and that my nephew uh, has the mindset of generosity that he hadn't even read it yet and um, it, it was just this quick gift and he said you keep that one you mark it up as you need to but I think that this is a really amazing something we can do if we get to this you know point where there's times when I just am like you know give me something to do to help the world make the world a better place like to help the powers that be that feel like they're trying to destroy us or what, whatever this is it's like give me the tools give me the ideas give me some steps and I really truly believe that this is one of the most powerful things that any of you listening to this message can possibly do to shift the energies of the planet and what you are expressing in your life and the lives of those around you um, this is a powerful concept and I love that this little book is from exactly 100 years ago. It was published in 1923. Like to me, that is perfection. Like I feel like the universe dropped this in my lap at exactly the right point. So what I would say, let's see if we can like, you know, pop a hundred new reviews on this little book and get us some traction. Um, I actually did a little search online um, for, for for this author before I opened and did this video for you and it's it called her work pseudoscience and it was basically just kind of saying that this is not based on any you know relevant psychology and it's just this little antiquated old book and I was like okay this means this is something really really important and really powerful because everything that I've read um, it this is how it felt to me so um, I would love to hear what you think. Maybe you're a person out there who's actually read this book. Um, how amazing would that be? And here's something else I'd like to know. If you're in Columbus, Ohio, and you're watching this, um, I would like to know, did I feel your energy? Um, that would be really cool. So let me know in the comments if you actually live in Columbus, or maybe anywhere in Ohio for that, for that matter. But I hope you have an absolutely brilliant Sunday. Um, this feels something like it's a powerful tool that we can all do together. So subscribe if you're not. Um, jump on and subscribe to our newsletter on our website. Just go to barlowherbal.com. This is how I share the videos that I make. Um, I'm also posting everything that I do on YouTube. I'm posting them on Rumble as well. So if you want to connect over there and um, get that community going, that would be epic. So have a beautiful Sunday and we will see you next time.